Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is the continuation of uh, uh, last lecture, that introduction to composite material, online lecture series four. So uh, this is the continuation of micro-mechanical analysis of the composite material. Uh, actually, I uh, discussed most aspects of micro-mechanical analysis of composite material in uh, last week. So I will revise some of the points from here also. Uh, my name is Amayat uh, from uh, IIT Kampur. Uh, I am PhD scholar and uh, uh, originally from Ethiopia, uh, from Defense University, College of Engineering, uh, which is located in Debrezait, Ethiopia. So uh, let me continue with the, uh, uh, today's lecture. That is continuation of the last. So I have to revise some uh, important points because there is a link between uh, last lecture and today's lecture. So that, uh, uh, so objective of this uh, fourth lecture is uh, to develop the concept of volume uh, fraction and weight fraction in composite uh, micromechanical analysis the concept of density, the concept of weight, how to find the nine mechanical properties, the four hydrothermal uh, uh, constants, uh, totally 13 constants. What are those 13 constants? So uh, we'll discuss on them. And uh, the experimental characterization of the nine uh, mechanical constants and the four hydrothermal constants. So these nine mechanical constants are uh, uh, four elastic, uh, actually, uh, elastic constants and the strength parameters, actually. So let's see. Actually, this uh, most definitely what micromechanical analysis we already discussed in the last uh, lesson. So uh, micromechanical analysis of composite material involves the development of analytical model for predicting microscopic composite material. Basically, these uh, composites can be analyzed in two uh, methods. One is from uh, basic elements to the building, taking the building block of elements, and then uh, making homogenization. Finally, we can find the structure. And another modeling system is uh, taking the structure and then uh, going to the lower scale of analysis, that is from structure level to uh, macro level, meso level, and the uh, micro level. So this uh, micro mechanics is mostly devoted for the from lower to higher, that is from uh, peeling block of the structure, that is from unit cell to to the structure means from micro to structure level. In between, there is micro, meso, and the macro levels are there. So uh, this is uh, what, so we actually, yeah, this is what I'm, what I'm saying. So from nano scale, micro scale, meso scale, macro scale, this is from lower to higher uh, structural level. And sometimes we go from the macro scale to meso, meso to micro, and then micro to nano scale. So that is the reverse. So uh, these are uh, the forward loop is, loop is homogenization, and the backward loop is stress uh, loop, or we call localization. So uh, uh, these are the two. Uh, so these are all discussed in last time. Actually, uh, the volume uh, fraction concept, the mass fraction concept, the volume and weight fraction concepts, densities, okay? The representative area element. So different, we can use different representative area element. So, uh, the relation between the representative area element with the uh, fiber volume fraction. 
and the material property. So this material property in the coming, in the preceding examples we use, this material property. So uh, please pay attention for the material properties. We are directly using most of the examples are related with graphite uh, epoxy uh, fiber and no graphite fiber graphite fiber so if the question glass or armite people can use this but the uh, book which i am uh, following is use the graphite fiber so that uh, this is a uh, table which is useful for us i'm using only si unit system and the epoxy is this one not aluminium or not polyamide, but uh, we are using the epoxy for most examples. So please refer these tables. They are helpful. So these are some of the examples which we solved in last time. So these are examples. Uh, this void is the defect, actually. That should be considered in the analysis that will uh, result in variation of uh, the total weight of the composite. So we have to consider the void. So these are examples which we have solved. So the four elastic constants, E1, the youngest modulus in the longitudinal direction, that means fiber direction, uh, transverse direction means uh, perpendicular to the fiber direction, uh, major pressure ratio, in-plane shear stress. These are the parameters, the four elastic parameters. There are also five strains parameters that uh, tensile strains in the longitudinal direction, compressive strains in the longitudinal direction, uh, tensile strains in the transfer direction, compressive strains in longitudinal direction, and the uh, shear strains, uh, the shear strains in the uh, uh, S12. So those parameters are uh, considered. So there are nine in uh, general. So the strains of material approaches, which we uh, use sometimes, some assumptions which are useful in the analysis of micromechanical uh, analysis. Okay bond between fiber and the matrix considered for fact elastic modeling diameter and space between fibers are uniform fiber are continuous and parallel in actual case fiber might not be parallel or continuous there may be some waviness and the fiber and the matrix follow hooks law that linearly elastic region we are not considering the uh, non-linear portion the fiber possesses uniform strains and that is free from void. But in actual case, these things are there. So this is what we have discussed in the last time. Okay. So uh, once and the fiber packing uh, geometry uh, is also under consideration. And the D over S, D is the distance, uh, D is the diameter of fiber. And the fibers. So this ratio for different packing geometry must be uh, considered. So these are the uh, portions which we have covered in the last uh, class. Okay, so now when I'm actually another thing. Uh, Longitudinal tensile testing setup. Uh, we must prefer the uh, specimen in this manner. This is the specimen with thickness T, with gauge length L, okay, with total lengths. So this is, and this is the longitudinal tensile strength test machine. Okay. This is the result of longitudinal. Uh, tensile strings versus longitudinal tensile string curve. And the mode of failure uh, during longitudinal tensile strings. When a uh, composite is subjected with longitudinal tensile strain, we can see different type of uh, failure modes. Some of them are uh, fiber fracture, 
there is also a fiber fracture uh, in, uh, accompanied with uh, fiber pullout. Here we can see fiber pullout. See, this is fiber fracture. And also fiber fracture with some shearing. There is a shearing in between uh, matrix materials. So these are some of the failure mechanisms of um, longitudinal tensile uh, strains assessment. So, and another is uh, longitudinal compressive strains. When uh, composites is subject to this longitudinal compressive, when it is subject to this compressive load, uh, what the failure mechanisms? These are the failure mechanisms, okay? Uh, these are some uh, type of kinking or uh, actually um, buckling types. Okay, this is uh, micro buckling, shear mode micro buckling and extension mode micro buckling are there. And also um, transverse tensile failure of the uh, matrix and shear failure of the matrix. So these are different mode of failures in the case of uh, uh, longitudinal compressive uh, loading. Okay, there are some data from uh, some organizations for carbon epoxy, kevlar epoxy, and glass polyester type of material for longitudinal compressive strains. This is the test setup of longitudinal compressive strains. So here, uh, the specimen is sent into the machine and which is subject to is a strain gauge. Different strain gauges are there, which is situated on the uh, specimen. And the specimen is uh, allowed to compress. So this is the uh, compressive uh, machine. Okay, so some example which we have done in the last lecture. Now, this is the continuation of the uh, part. So, transverse tensile strains, how we can uh, experimentally do transverse tensile strains? So, look, that transverse tensile, when I say transverse tensile strains, it is not in the fiber direction, but the direction of tension is perpendicular to the fiber direction. So, this is the work piece. This is the work piece, which is uh, uh, subjected, uh, which is uh, uh, strain gauge is placed in uh, somewhere at the middle of the work piece. Okay, this is the work piece having widths, or uh, we can width W and the thickness T. Okay, so some of the parameters related is. Uh, this thing are L1, what is L1, what is L2, what is W, we are already here. These are a standard uh, work piece. And assumptions which are used in the case of transverse tensile strain. So, perfect fiber matrix bonding is considered. Uniform spacing of fiber. Fiber matrix follow Hooke's law, that elasticity law, and there are no residual stress. So, that uh, with the thermal stress or other uh, residual stress are not considered, uh, which can affect the result. So this is the uh, stress strain diagram of longitudinal compressive uh, and uh, uh, testing. No, uh, longitudinal tensile, not tensile, but compressive testing. So. Look, this is uh, the loading and uh, transverse tensile loading. So, sigma 2 is given like this. These are fibers. This is longitudinal axis is in this direction. Okay, this is longitudinal direction. This is transverse direction. So, uh, load is applied to the perpendicular to the fiber. Okay. Fiber have it is fiber is not like this. It is not like very huge. It is uh, given in micro, okay, maybe ten micrometer, the diameter of fiber. Here we exaggerated it to the very much. So,
formation class deformation of the matrix. Okay, when we apply this load, matrix deform fiber also. So that it is the superimposition of the two. So these are some of the relations of the fiber and the matrix uh, elongation or deformation. Okay. So finally, we get the ultimate strength of uh, 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 sigma two. Sigma two implies for the uh, transverse direction. Sigma one is for longitudinal direction. So, which is related is the youngest nucleus of material in two direction times the strain in two. That is T implies for tensile. Okay. So let's take a simple example. So find ultimate transverse tensile strains of unidirectional glass epoxy lamina with 70% of bullion fraction. So we have to refer data of table one and table two. I already uh, uh, placed data of table one and table two there. So anyone can easily go back and see those data. So uh, this uh, we can calculate from the data uh, delta uh, no strain of two is given us like this and e2 for graphite epoxy is this okay so I, actually these are uh, calculated values which we obtain from previous examples we made some example before so we can find this thing from there so uh, sigma 2 of uh, tensile, that is uh, transverse stress in the tensile, transverse stress uh, is equal to 20.56 mega uh, pascal. And this is the Finally, we can get uh, transverse uh, compressive strains, uh, stress uh, equal to youngest modulus in uh, transverse direction times the uh, strain, transverse strain, and the compressive transverse strain. And also, this compressive transverse strain is related is the uh, youngest modulus of matrix material and the youngest modulus of fiber material and diameter of the fiber, spacing between the fiber, it's related with this phenomena. So, and with uh, matrix compressive strain. So, this. So, another example uh, find ultimate transverse compressive strains. So, ultimate transverse compressive strains, uh, which is equal to uh, transverse youngest modulus times ultimate transverse strain. So, uh, substituting these values from tables and uh, previously uh, calculated values, uh, we can get this answer. So, this is the transverse compressive stress versus transverse compressive strain curve for the particular uh, question. In plane shear strains, so that uh, when there is a shear uh, force is subjected to the composite, uh, the deformation of the deformation of the fiber plus and deformation of matrix, and the formation of composite is given with this relation. Fiber is this, matrix is here. So we substitute those things, and finally we get. Uh, uh, tau 1 to that is ultimate uh, shear strains, uh, which is equal to uh, shear strains in 1 to direction times the shear uh, strain 1 to ultimate shear strain in 1 to direction. So, uh, this is the relation, and also it can be related with the uh, uh, diameter of fiber and the spacing between fiber. And this is the relation. So, 
This is example on this particular topic. So find ultimate uh, shear strains for glass epoxy. Okay, how we can find? So GF is already there in the table. GM is in the table. Uh, G12 is calculated in the former examples. D over S is already calculated. Okay. Uh, uh, for uh, uh, square array, D over S is this one. And then uh, gamma 1, 2 uh, on the matrix, ultimate uh, matrix uh, shear strength in one, one two direction is uh, calculated as this. And uh, uh, ultimate shear strength of uh, this particular material is on us 9.469 megapascal and when we are uh, making measurement uh, on a particular composite of uh, which is made from plus or minus 45 stacking sequence this is stacking sequence plus or minus 45 two s means a symmetric play having plus 45, minus 45, again, minus 45, plus 45. Uh, let me write this, uh, the meaning of this thing. Uh, pin, pin, where is pin? Sorry. I didn't see pin. I want to write something. Okay, show. Uh, pointer, okay, pin here. Sorry. So, the meaning of this uh, is 45. The stacking sequence is 45 minus 45 and this two s means i can repeat the same pattern 45 minus 45 okay again symmetry is there symmetry symmetry means I have to repeat this from here to here, should be repeated in this direction. So this means um, it is a play consisting of eight laminates. This play consists of eight laminates, means uh, one laminate is like this. Uh, let me Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight flags. So plus forty five, minus forty five, plus forty five, minus forty five, then symmetry will come here. This is axis of symmetry. Then minus 45 plus 45 minus 45 plus 45. Okay, so this is the arrangement of the play. So uh, this is symmetric laminate of uh, plus or minus 45 times. So our restraint gauge will be placed in uh, zero direction. This direction implies that the direction of fiber. So we call it as zero. And then, in 45, another strain gauge is situated. And also, in 90 degree, another strain. 3 implies this uh, strain gauge 3 is in the 90 direction. So, strain gauge is situated on 4, a uh, 3 uh, place. And the finally, this is the stress strain diagram of, the shear stress strain diagram of uh, the particular uh, 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 loading. Now, another important uh, 
Now we discussed uh, nine constants. Four last constants, like E1, that youngest modulus in the fiber direction, E2, youngest modulus in the transverse direction, uh, poison ratio 1, 2, and the shear modulus uh, 1, 2 are the four last constants. We already discussed them at the very beginning. Again, five strange parameters. For example, uh, compressive, uh, no, tensile strains in the agile direction, Cons compressive strains in the agile direction, tensile strains in the transverse direction, compressive strains in the uh, uh, transverse direction, and the shear strains uh, uh, S1, 2. So, three, um, five. Uh, strength parameters and four elastic parameters. Now, the remaining four are uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion and the uh, this hydrothermal uh, coefficients are uh, be there. So from them, coefficient of thermal expansion is alpha one and alpha two. So alpha one is the coefficient of thermal expansion in uh, uh, direction one, that is in the fiber direction. And alpha two is the coefficient of thermal expansion in the transverse direction. So uh, these are the two coefficients of thermal expansions. So when a composer is subject to temperature change, uh, it is dimension related to its original dimension changes in proportion to the temperature change, that delta T. This is delta T. Delta T. So the coefficient of thermal expansion is defined as the change in the linear uh, dimension of a body per unit length per unit change of temperature. So the two coefficients are this. So how longitudinal thermal expansion coefficient obtained? So we have these relations of uh, uh, longitudinal thermal coefficient. So this is our longitudinal thermal coefficient. Transverse thermal coefficient, uh, expansion coefficient, is also obtained from this relation. In this case, uh, the strain in and find uh, the stress in the matrix in one direction, the stress in fiber also related to delta T. And finally, we can get uh, strain two. That means strain in the two direction is obtained. So finally, we can calculate, uh, we can find the relation of uh, alpha two. So example related with alpha one and alpha two is given here. So what uh, the fiber uh, youngest model is given, matrix youngest model is given, E1 is calculated from uh, previous examples. The Poisson ratio of uh, uh, fiber and the matrix are given. Alpha F and alpha M are there in table one and the two. So this, these are also from table. Then finally, we can substitute those values in the uh, uh, formulas given uh, previously. The next is coefficient of moisture expansion. So two uh, thermal coefficient expansion and the two moisture expansions are we call them as a hydrothermal expansion or a hydrothermal uh, part. So when the composite is uh, absorbed some water, it expands. So the change in dimension of the body is measured by coefficient of moisture expansion. So which are represented with beta 1 and beta 2. So linear coefficient of moisture expansion in one direction is given in beta 1 
and linear expansion of moisture expansion in two directions, beta 2. And here, the unknown terms is delta Cf, delta Cn. So these are the two unknown uh, terms. So that delta is the moisture concentration in kilogram per gram, which is unitless quantity. So uh, it is moisture concentration. So this is a, a method of finding the uh, growth and this uh, moisture expansion coefficients and the strain in the fiber, the strain in the matrix. Okay. So these are the two formulas. Okay. So W of F is the weight here. Okay, weight is there. So example on this particular. So uh, beta M and beta F are uh, already there in the, uh, and actually beta M, we can find it from table. The rem everything is from table, the density from table, okay, density of fiber, density of matrix from table, the poison ratio from table, the uh, density of composite is decalculated actually from the two we calculate in former examples. Okay, uh, Ivan is calculated, this is calculated, and this is from table. Okay, so taking these values, we directly calculate beta 1 and beta 2, that is uh, uh, the two coefficient of moisture expansion for glass deposit. So thank you very much, this is uh, uh, today's and in the next, we'll see the macro mechanical analysis of composite. So uh, I expect uh, uh, your attention. Okay, goodbye.